G'day YouTube, it's Turbo Tristan here. In today's video, we're going to help out our good friend Rex H and paint his rocker cover and timing chain cover for his Barra Turbo build. Iverson, that's not where you're supposed to be, mate. So stick around, I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know about how to paint any of your small parts or even a whole car and make it come out like brand new factory, just like I bought one. So OGs to the channel will know that I've painted my black Civic entirely with rattle cans. I then had to paint the silver Civic entirely with rattle cans because somebody stuffed that up. Uh, we won't go into that. I've painted plenty of other stuff, my valve cover for my K-Swap, uh, the engine bays in the Civics, heaps of heaps and heaps of parts, and I'm not gonna lie, they come up pretty well. So I'm gonna teach you all the stuff I know on how to paint so it comes out like original factory. Uh, really, really good job, um, if I do say so myself. So first you need to decide what you're gonna paint. Now you can use this method of painting on anything, and I'm gonna show you all of the things that you need to have. So what we have here are a valve cover or a rocker cover and a front timing cover. So we're going to paint these and we want them to be really bright and vibrant and stand out on the build for Rex's channel. Now I'm going to release this video after he announces what the colour is. So it's no big secret, he's painting it um, this really bright orange pearl, which is going to clash in a good way. There it is there, you won't be able to tell from that but it's gonna clash in a good way against the aqua teal sort of metallic green color. So orange and green should probably never be seen, but I think this is gonna look awesome. And what you're gonna to need to do is prep all of your surfaces first. So we're already a quarter of the way or halfway through the process here. I wasn't gonna do a video on this, but you know, people come to my channel so I can teach them things uh, and I'm teaching guys things, so here it is, Rex is gonna learn and you're gonna learn at home. First thing I did with this valve cover is give it a good thorough clean and pressure wash, degrees, got all the grease and oil and everything off it. Then I went ahead and I smoothed off all of the casting marks that were around. This is what I mean by casting marks. So see those lumpy bits there? I've left them in there because there's actually gonna be coil packs in here, two cam sensors here, and then there's gonna be a black plastic cover that goes across the top of the engine. So for the most part, you're gonna see the front and the sides all the way around, and then the, the timing cover there. So inside here is not crucial to the task. Once you've cleaned that up, give it a smooth with some sandpaper. I recommend, depending on how rough it is, either a 400 or a 600, get it nice and smooth, give it another wash, another degrees, another clean, get all those metal filings off. Once you've gone and done that, what you need to do after you've washed everything down completely is get some wax and grease remover or prep wash. That's this stuff here. It's kind of, sort of, but not really like metho or something like that. Uh, it's not, it cleans off wax and grease, exactly what it uh, usually says, or prep wash. Prep, wash. So wash it all down as part of your prep. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and run some etch primer if it's a steel item, or plastic primer if it's a plastic item. It works exactly the same way. You don't wanna cake that on, you don't have to cake that on, you sort of give it a very light dust coat. And with a dust coat, what that is is you basically just really lightly get it on there and it gives the surface, it bonds onto the surface and gives the paint something to grab hold of and stick to. A tip if you're working with metal parts is to always get them pretty warm, around 25, 30 degrees, get it nice and warm to the touch. I've already done that with these. I'll give it another hit again soon before I actually paint because I've got to clear the cat out. But keep everything warm. The reason why you want it warm is the paint will stick and start to dry and start to bond on there pretty much straight away. It's not gonna be super hot so it just cooks immediately. You don't want that because that'll ruin the paint drying time and procedure, but you want it so it will sort of stick to it 
and sort of melt on or bake on for lack of a better term, but not too hot, around about 25, 30 degrees approximately. The next step and the next thing you wanna do is get some primer onto there reasonably quick because you want the primer to stick to the dust coat of etch primer. So this one, give it a light coat, wait a second. Once you see it's sticking and, and all going well, you can then start to put on a slightly heavier coat and I like to put on a couple of coats of this because the next tip to get it nice and smooth like a factory cars paint is to sand it down. So once it's had about a day to dry, which this one's had a whole day of dry time, wet sand with a thousand grit sandpaper just to take all the bumps off, get it really smooth. You'll be able to then feel everything out and just double check that it's nice and smooth. There's no impurities or anything stuck in the primer like fur or mosquitoes or anything like that. You clean all that out. So another wash with water and then another wash with the prep wash. Then you heat it up, dry it all down, get everything good to go. Once it's warm to touch, there's no more water spots, there's no fur or hair or anything on there and it's the wax and grease remover's done its job. Then you can move on to painting. For the most part, you then go and take your well shaken can of color. In this case, it's a base coat because we're gonna do a two pack or a 2K clear coat on top. So this time we're just doing the color in a base coat, which is a base acrylic. You can go straight to a 2K color coat if you want to, which is what I did on the black car, uh, the black Civic. It was just straight two pack black, boom, on, dry, done. In hindsight, having that being my first car that I painted, I would have preferred to do it in a base coat and then clear coat on top of it. It means that you can sort of, um, any errors or anything like that or any runs, you can just sand them straight out and you're only sanding away the clear, not the color. Um, so if anyone has seen my car up close, will see that I've sanded out a couple of runs and gone through back to the primer. So I've got lazy, I haven't done that again. But if I used a base coat and then a clear coat in 2K clear over the top, I could just simply sand back any runs, bubbles, drips, drops, whatever like that, and then cut and buff it and you would never know. So once you've had the primer dry overnight, you've sanded it, everything's good, it's nice and warm, You've put on your base coat nice and evenly. You don't have to go too crazy with it, especially if it's a pearl, because you want to sort of be able to see through it and give it some depth. You don't want to cake it on because if you keep packing on the base coat, especially if it's a metallic or a pearl, you'll sort of drown out any of the pearl or anything in there. I know that sounds weird. You'd think more is better, but not really because Depending on the type of pearl, if it's like a dark pearl, you want a dark color underneath, but for the most part, candy colors and light pearl colors, you want a light base, and that will actually shine through the metallic paint and make the pearl pop. So I've got a trick for that, which we're gonna do in a moment. But this is the 2K clear. This is the magical stuff. Um, really simple, it's clear, see-through. You can't really stuff this up but it does come with a little red tab, which I've popped out of there. You smash it onto that little bit here. And what that does is bust a membrane inside there and allows the hardener to mix with the clear color. And then you've got your 2K two-part hardening paint. Now you'll notice down here, I've got a pot with, it did have boiling hot water in it, it's now room temperature, which is good. The reason I do that is to heat up the cans, get nice pressure in them. That means it won't spit or dribble out when you're spraying. It also helps the paint mix around. So when you're shaking it, you're not shaking some thick, gluggy paint. You're, sh you're shaking nice, runny, smooth, even flowing paint. What I'm gonna do for this, so this is a light gray primer. It's pretty close to white, but sort of an off-white color. What I'm gonna do for Rex to make sure his orange pearl pops and is really, really bright in an engine bay because engine bays can be pretty dark at times, is I'm gonna use some of this um, bright white uh, acrylic undercoat. It only takes 10 minutes to dry. It's an undercoat and it's super bright white. So 
With white as a color, you might think that's a pretty basic color, it's white, no biggie. In most whites, there's about four or five different colors, usually reds, yellows, or blues. Sometimes a combination of all of them and even blacks in some of the white colors. So this is really bright, really vibrant. I used it underneath all of the fluoro colors that I've done recently, and it makes the fluoro pop. It also means you don't need to put too much of the base color over the top because it, it makes it really bright. So I'm gonna run this on now. I'm gonna get Iverson inside so he doesn't die from fumes, spray paint fumes. Shake all these up, warm that up again, and we'll get painting. I've got to find my mask as well. Oh, oh, oh. 
All right, so it's been around about two hours of thereabouts. Uh, the clear's gone on, as you would have seen in the time lapse. Um, it first started to look really orange peely, but that's the thing with clear. It settles down and lays flat after a while. So I'll just show you nice deep pearl and of course being on the GoPro everything pops even more but I can't wait to see this in the sunlight it's going to look epic but I hope you really liked this how to paint things tutorial you can use this method on just about anything like I said it all comes down to your prep making sure that everything's clean smooth uh, you sand down the primer, sand down the area. If, it, if you can feel any bumps or anything or see any bumps, then it's going to be doubled once you put paint on. So there's a little bit here. See that little bit of a rough bit there? There were some really lumpy casting marks like that, and I spent a couple of seconds. Rex didn't want me to fuss over it too much, so I just hit it with the flapper disc and just took those off. Didn't spend too much time on it. So a couple of little ripples there. I could have got that perfectly smooth and I could have taken out all these bumps too um, and you would never see them but again it's all in the prep the other thing I didn't really show you guys was masking everything off I thought that was a bit of a no-brainer just make sure that paint can't get to where you don't want it to go it'll only go where you spray it so if there's anywhere where you don't want it to go make sure you mask it all off um, in places like this oil breather here and the oil cap, I've just stuffed that with some paper towel. And I'm not going to remove that until it's fully dried and hardened because I don't want to rip any paint off because that is also soaked and hard with clear as well. Alright, so it's the next day. The sun is about to set that's why i'm squinting it's right in my eyes but i wanted to get a look at these outside in the sunlight because that's where the real satisfaction is seeing all of this stuff when the pearl goes off in the sunlight and even though it's not direct sun it's well it kind of is boom um you can still get to see all of those pearl effects in there and all the metallic goodness. Um, it's had around about a day, almost 24 hours to cure. So you can pick it up, you can touch it. It's still not fully hardened yet, but uh, you get the deal. You get the drift. So that'll go on awesomely. So I've actually painted this black car over here entirely with rattle cans, it's absolutely putrid now. This one has no clear coat on it, it's just straight colour. So I kind of half know what I'm talking about. Well that brings us to the end of another video. I just wanted to share my tips with you on how to paint pretty much anything and make it look professional and give it a really, really good finish. I think you'll agree, this turned out pretty awesome. Again, it's not... Uh, show car quality and it was never meant to be but while I was going I thought it's best that I give you guys another tutorial it's been a while I'm really happy with it this is the type of thing that you get a lot of satisfaction from um, it's super glassy super glossy like look at that in there just those curves very sexy so if you have any questions about painting uh, drop them in the comments below. In the meantime, don't forget to spool up, bring the boost, and we'll see you in the next one. If there's anything else you want me to teach you guys how to do, let me know in the comments below, and I'll do my best to make a video on it. Cheers!